Hi, I'm Dan Romanchik, KB6NU, Communications Manager for Amateur Radio Digital Communications, or ARDC for short. Today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about some of the grants we've been making and how we're making an impact, certainly in amateur radio, but even more so in the lives of our grantees. First, let me tell you a little bit about who we are. ARDC is a private foundation that makes grants to nonprofit organizations that support the growth of amateur radio and develop technology used in amateur radio. We are particularly interested in projects which are technically innovative and include underrepresented individuals and groups. ARDC also manages AmperNet, or 44Net, which connects amateur radio operators with the Internet and allows radio amateurs to experiment with digital communications. The history of ARDC is quite fascinating, actually. The short version is that back in the early 1980s, when the Internet was just getting started, and IP addresses were to be had for the asking, Hank Magnuski, KA6M, had the foresight to request a block of addresses for amateur radio experimentation. He was assigned a Class A block of 16 million IP addresses. That is, all of the IP addresses starting with 44, the 44 block. At first, this block of addresses was administered by an ad hoc group of radio amateurs, including KA6M, Brian Cantor, WB6CYT, and Phil Karn, KA9Q. In 2011, the nonprofit corporation Amateur Radio Digital Communications ARDC, was formed and control of these addresses was passed to it. HAMS never came close to using half of those addresses, and in 2018, the ARDC Board of Directors began discussing the possibility of selling part of the address space, and with the proceeds, award grants to deserving organizations to support and promote amateur radio. That sale happened in 2019. The sale included one quarter of the address space, or about 4 million IP addresses. At that point, ARDC became a private foundation and began awarding grants. We were able to ramp up this process after our executive director, Rosie Schechter, KJ7RYV, was hired in 2020, and the rest of our staff came on board in 2021. Okay, now let's see how we're making an impact. As a private foundation, we have to give away at least 5% of our assets on average every year. In 2022, that comes to about $6 million. In 2021, we had to give away $9 million because in 2020, we fell a little short of our 5% goal. Education is one of our top priorities. We have awarded several grants to STEM programs and have funded lots of scholarships. In 2021, ARDC granted more than $1 million to organizations awarding scholarships, including the ARRL. ARDC funded approximately 25% of the scholarships awarded by the ARRL Foundation for the 2021-2022 school year. The Society of Women Engineers. This grant included funding for 30 women pursuing technical careers. OMIC which is a multicultural amateur radio club, got $50,000, which will provide 10 $5,000 scholarships to deserving students. Scholarships are going to continue to be a focus for us. This year, we're reaching out to institutions and organizations outside of amateur radio, but that still focus on technical careers, such as Hampton University and the Colorado School of Mines. We're also making an effort to find organizations outside the U.S. who award scholarships so that we can make an impact worldwide and not just here in the U.S. Now, let's see how we're making an impact in amateur radio in the lives of youth. In 2021, we gave a grant to the Bridgerland, Utah Amateur Radio Club for a program whose goal is to engage and educate youth in amateur radio through hands-on space science activities. The program's goals are to host two hands-on workshops for youth ages 11 to 17, where they will assemble a payload for a high-altitude balloon, launch it, and then successfully recover it. 
The program will also set up and maintain a portable ground station to help schools make ISS contacts. And finally, the club will work with teachers, makerspaces, and other youth groups to offer events where students can learn how to find, track, and communicate through amateur satellites. To date, the club has sent up one balloon and is planning a second. Sixteen girls participated in this activity, along with 14 adult mentors. They have also scheduled an international space station contact that will occur sometime in the first half of 2023. To prepare for the contact, the club will work with key teachers to plan and conduct amateur radio activities like fox hunts and other space science activities leading up to the contact. Finally, they have begun working on the ground station so that it will be ready for the contact. These activities have had quite an impact on all involved. The girls gain self-confidence once they realize they are good at STEM. The adult mentors learned and had fun as well. Skills the girls learned included soldering, Arduino programming, and APRS to track and recover the balloon. Each of the girls found something to be interested in. Four girls are now studying for their amateur radio license. Two of them with parents who will also want to get their license. Now let's see how ARDC is making an impact on amateur radio technology. Perhaps the best example of this is the M17 project. By developing a new digital radio protocol for data and voice made by and for radio amateurs, they really intend to reshape the future of amateur radio digital communications. One of the keys is that this project is producing completely open source hardware and software. There are no patents, no royalties, and no licensing or legal barriers to building or modifying a radio that hams already own. M17 feels that the patents and licensing agreements now required for commercially available digital voice radios is one reason why amateur radio digital voice modes have largely stagnated since the 1990s. Ham radio is almost wholly dependent on commercial products that aren't well designed for amateur radio users. The M17 project is developing both hardware and software. The specification is online at spec.m17project.org. M17 is also currently experimenting with existing hardware and developing new hardware for use with the M17 protocol. Module 17, shown at right, is a smart microphone module that plugs into an existing 9600 baud capable radio. M17 is working with OpenRTX, which is free and open source firmware for digital ham radios. OpenRTX supports the M17 protocol and it is currently available for MD380 and series clones, uh, Alunce HD1, and more. The M17 protocol is also supported by a number of hotspots and SDR programs. The M17 project feels that it is making an impact in a number of ways. One way they're doing this is by bringing the hobby back to its roots designing and using homebrew equipment. They're also developing free and open source protocols, codecs, firmware, and applications that anyone can implement at no cost and are freely hackable. They also have a large worldwide community that is open to anyone, not just amateur radio licensees. They are promoting learning and growth in amateur radio for people seeking out new experiences and skills with guidance from experienced hands. Their goals are forward thinking and well suited for an ever changing future with fresh ideas and new technology being researched and developed. This really is a great project and we're happy to fund them. If you don't know about this project yet, check out their website, m17project.org. Now that you've seen how others are making an impact, let us help you make an impact. To apply for a grant, go to www.amper.org apply. 
To make your proposal really stand out, include previous accomplishments, show how you are doing outreach and building community around your project, state how you will comply with ARDC's open access, open source requirement, explain how your project is innovative, include inclusiveness and equity initiatives your group is engaged in, include how you will engage youth to fight the graying of the hobby, and include any other fundraising and support that you are receiving for this project. If you have any questions or just like more information, you can visit our booth here at QSO today. I'll be in the booth. You can visit our website, www.amper.org, or you can email our staff with your questions. John Hayes is our outreach manager, and Chelsea Paraga is our grants manager. Thanks for your attention, and now I'm ready to take any questions. Well, actually, you're the big guy, so I'll go, I'll go in the background. <laughs> so, let's see here. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, but if anyone has some, please feel free to add them. Well, let's do it this way. There you go. There you go. That's better. Okay. I'm Eric Forza one ug also the host of the QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo. If, if there's anyone out there, if you have questions that you want us to uh, answer, uh, please put them in the chat. Yeah, there should there should be a link, uh, uh, right, Eric, uh, on the. Yeah, so uh, I'll I'll, um, I'll put the chat. The, I'll put the question up so you can actually see it here. So. It's, so um, the, there's a, the link to this presentation will be back in, if you want to see this presentation again, it will be in the um, auditorium, the QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo Auditorium for 30 days, and then it'll be out on the, um, uh, on the internet or in, in our library, and I'm sure ARDC will also have it, right? Uh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but we can do that. Okay, um, let me put the next one up. So David so, asks, what if a grant is awarded and then it is learned that the funds are not sufficient to complete the effort? So we've had this uh, several times and this generally has not been a problem. If uh, the grantee can uh, show why the grants didn't seem to be uh, enough, we're, we're more than happy to uh, bump that up a little bit. Okay, Walter WA3RWP asks, is necessary to address each of the areas, i.e. STEM, club building, et cetera, or can they concentrate on only one or two? Well, of course, you know, you, your project is going to be special, right? It's going to be uh, individual. And so, no, I wouldn't say you have to uh, address them all. You know, the more boxes you check, the better chances you have, have of getting the grant. But no, that's that's certainly not necessary. You know, especially like take a club building, for example. Uh, we recently, uh, I forget what club it was, but we gave them some money to help them revitalize their club. And what was important in that grant was that, was their plan for doing that, okay? They, they were able to show uh, uh, how they were gonna do that. And, and it looked like they had thought through the process and that's why they got the grant. So, so no, it's you know not necessarily to do them all. If if you can uh, uh, do some club building with with a STEM project, well, so much the better. But uh, no, it's not uh, necessarily to do it all. Okay, Brenda asks. Uh, Brenda K D two U C Q asks. No question, but would like to thank you all for a great role. Well, okay. Thank you so, for the so great let, work let that get, you are assisting making possible. 
let me let me give you a kudo on this eric brenda was like the first one we talked to in our booth like a year ago march and uh she ended up applying and got a grant and uh, uh she's well on her way to uh, having a great project oh i think that's great oh that's terrific yeah um, yeah it was great Scott K seven TTN asks, "What type of collaborations will improve an application?" So this is a good question too. So what what the grant uh, app, uh, grant awards committee looks for is for widespread community support. So for example, if you were uh, a cert team, uh, you know, doing something something with cert teams, uh, you might want to uh, get a letter from your police department, or you know, maybe have the police department kick in a few bucks into the whole project. It's it's that kind of thing that uh, that we're looking for. You know, if you were a, a museum radio station, you know, we wanted to put a radio station at the museum, you know, show us that the, the museum was behind the project and and, and what kind of uh, uh, contributions they were also making to the project. And so it's that kind of thing that, that improves your chances of getting a, a grant application accepted. Okay, Jay, WBATKL asks, how is it assured that funds that are granted actually go toward the project stated in the grant? Is there a financial review to assure monies are not being redirected or pilfered? Yeah, so in fact, we're, we're starting this with our first, kind of our first round of grantees to go through, a, a, you know, get them to report on it, show things that were purchased, and uh, show progress uh, on the on the project plan. So we do we do do these reviews. Okay, Mark W zero QL asks: Our club is trying to build a remote station to get more hams on the air, but we need funds. Is a remote station a candidate for a grant? You know, it could be. It could be uh, under the club building um, um, category, if you will. Um, a lot depends on uh, the, your app, actual situation, but uh, I certainly would say that that, uh, that is a possibility. I, too, would like to, to build a remote station. Um, yeah, yeah, well, we're not, talk, we're not talking about, well, so, well, actually, that, that, that brings up a good point. So this, this gentleman, W0QL, was saying his club. So the club has to be a 501c3. We, we can only give uh, grants to uh, organizations in the U.S. that are 501c3 or university or other educational uh, uh, groups. That's, that's just a, a restriction put on us by the IRS. So, uh, Mark, I would say, um, you know, make sure your club is a 501c3, first of all, because uh, otherwise th that grant would not be possible. Okay, Scott, K7TTN has another question. Are grants limited to hardware, labor, travel, consultant fees, or recurring service fees? Are there any restrictions where funds can or cannot be used? So this is another good question. So in general, what we're trying to fund are basically the startup costs of a project. There may we may in certain some cases um, fund operating costs for a year, maybe two years, but in general, in your proposal, you'll have to be you you'll want to show how you're going to sustain that that whatever it is the repeater or the club station or whatever after that first year or two. So Walter W A three R W P again asks. What is the deadline for submitting proposals? You know, I should have had all these questions before I put the presentation together. <laughs> That's a good question. So the way we're, the way we're handling pro, uh, proposals now is we do it four times a year. We, we gather up all the uh, uh, applications uh, up to certain deadlines. And the, the, there's only one more deadline left for 2022. That's October 1st. I know it's a very short fuse here, but you can still submit a proposal after that. Say you're not going to be ready till November 15th or something. You can still submit that proposal and we'll consider that proposal sometime in 2023 when that first deadline date is in 2023, which I'm going to guess is probably going to be around January 30th, give or take. 
so, so they go into so the next all, hopper. Always, well, excuse me. They go into the next hopper. So if they're yeah, if they it's beyond the, 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 the date, then it just goes into the next batch. Right. And actually, you know, this is kind of funny too. The actual technical term for that is tranche. The proposal will go into the next tranche. <laughs> <laughs> I learned okay. that's something I learned when I got in, got this job. Okay, so Logan KE7AZ asks, I applied for a grant in July and haven't received any feedback on its status. Is there somewhere I can go to check on my grant application status? You know, I want to apologize for this because um we're we're in the process of switching the software we use to process grant applications and we're having some a little bit of trouble with our software we haven't lost anybody's application all the information is still there but getting the information out especially to the grantees uh, we're having a little trouble with that but but we're working on that and and we're gonna uh, uh, get that fixed. I, I would say in the meantime, if uh, if any of you are in that situation, you know, send me an email or send Chelsea an email and uh, we'll get you that information. So Dan, I have a question. Does that mean that at some point um, a, a grant uh, uh, an applicant will get like a username and password to actually look at, you know, to actually go into the back of your system and, and see what their, their status is without having yes. to call the office? Yes. So, so what happens is right now, when you go to, I think it's grant, just grant.ardc.net, you go to the homepage of our grant software, grant system software, and um, you set up an account. We ask you to set up an account. And then when you, you submit your proposal, um, it'll keep track of it and you'll be able to log in and see statuses and stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Scott K7TTN asks, is it possible to review past awarded grants? Well, so what we have online, what we have at amper.org is a short description of all the grants we've awarded so far. So you can go to the, uh, the uh, website and see that. You can't actually see the grant applications, but you can see the types of grants we've given out and the amounts. All the amounts are there as well. And, and if you have you know particular questions about the applications, just call us. Call us or email us or whatever. Well, we're more than happy to help. Okay, Walter WA3RWP asks. Um, are clubs required to be a 501c3 for any grant or just for the purchase of a remote station? It's it's any grant. You have you have to be a 501c3 to receive any any kind of grant. Now, having said that, there is sort of a there is a way around, just like anything. This is the exception to prove the rule. So if you had a group that would be your fiscal sponsor, that and that's a technical term, fiscal sponsor then your club itself doesn't have to be a 501c3. For example, if you were going to set up that uh, remote station at a local science museum, for example, that science museum could be the 501c3 that we actually give the grant to. If that, I hope that makes some sense. So, so in, in that case, uh, well, in that case, at, the museum is actually getting the grant. But, th but there are other groups that are fiscal sponsors for projects. For example, uh, we're uh, funding a project now to fix uh, uh, AX.25 software in Linux. And the fiscal sponsor for that project is gonna be the Deutsche Amateur Radio Club, the German equivalent of the AWRL. So they're, they're taking the responsibility for the funds while the, the hams themselves that are working on the project are gonna be working on the software. So what's interesting about that, Dan? I'm just I'm just curious. AX25 is um, 40 years old in terms of being a a protocol. Does that mean that it's that the ARDC is actually helping to bring this protocol up to the state of the art? That's that's the goal here. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, amazing. That's the goal. Well, you know, I mean, it, it is a kind of amazing. Actually, it's in a in a way, if you ask me, it, it's kind of amazing that it's sort of 
gotten into the state it's in. And, and that, that actually brings up a very good point is that there are, the, I don't think the AX.25 software is the only ham radio software in that condition. So we're and within ARDC, we're talking about projects like that that need our support to keep them up to date and relevant. And 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 that's what that's what we want to do. That's one thing we want to do. So well, I think you know, point, I mean, you this, put that out in the M17 project, for example, is 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 that um, there ha you know we tend to be using um, if we're in DMR or something like that commercial versions of something that wasn't really intended for amateur radio. But um, the ability to fund a project like M17 allows us to have a ham radio friendly software running on a, a digital system that's for ham radio. Right. right. Exactly. It doesn't have all of the issues that DMR might have. Right. And, and for example. you know, the, the, so a lot of this, just to get off a little bit on a tangent, but, you know, the, I, part of the problem is some of these projects are, I mean, they're hams, right? Then so it's all amateur stuff, amateurs doing this. So I can see us in the future uh, providing some kind of support to make sure these projects are more professionally run. You know, so 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 like the AX.25 doesn't get into the situation it's in. You know, that that, that kind of thing. Right. It, it has know, continuous like, updates and maintenance. Kind of yeah. like a kind of like a Linux group does. Yeah, yeah. You know, and another example right. of this is uh, APRS, right? So, uh, you know, Bob Berninga, WB4APR, APR, uh, I say APR, uh, you know, he he was the man on that project. Well, now that he's passed, um, there's a group that's formed uh, to, to carry on that work. And I think that eventually we're going to end up funding that that uh, that effort. It, it, because we don't, you know, we don't want that to go away. We want that to continue to be usable and 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 even better than it is now. What is the most unusual um, project that ARDC is funding right now? Would you say? Oh boy, that's a good question. Actually, one of them, one of these projects, I almost used in 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 the presentation. It's it's there's a group called Rizomatica, and what they're doing. It's not amateur radio per se, but they're using amateur radio technology. They're using the micro bid X and they're building on top of the micro bid X and they're providing communications for people in the Amazon region that are in you know the middle of nowhere in the Amazon. And not only are they doing voice and, and they're not really doing Morse code. They, they haven't gotten into that, but not only they're doing voice communi communications, they're doing digital communications. So, so these folks in the, in the middle of the Amazon can actually send digital files and di digital pictures to, you know, somewhere. And what, what that's allowing them to do is to monitor like the poaching that goes on in those regions. And so that, that's a, that's really kind of uh, one of the more exotic projects. And like I say, I'm, I almost put that in this presentation, but uh, you know, it, it just didn't quite work out. Okay, Jack, WG9X asks, may you need a grant to fix the software? Are we talking um, about the AX25? Yeah, I'm not quite sure what this is asking. Well, might have I think uh, Jack might have asked it when you were talking about maybe um, AX twenty five. Oh, well, yeah. So, so that's what that's what's happening is we're the 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 dark the the Deutsche Amateur Radio Club has formed a, a group uh, of now really knowledgeable software developers to fix that software, and that's what's going to happen. They're gonna they're gonna fix the some of the bugs in it and and see if they can make it uh, make it a little bit better. We, we have some uh, room for more questions if there's anybody here um, that wants to ask more questions. Uh, Dan, what is the minimum, the, the smallest grant size that um, that you would cons that ARDC would consider? Well, that's a, that's a good question too. I would I, so what we've done is we've funded the ARRL club grant program. And so they, they were given uh, a grant to fund up to $500,000 of club grants. 
And the ARRL, the, the agreement sort of we have with them, is that the ARRL is going to handle everything under $25,000, while any grants that are asking for more than $25,000 would be uh, submitted directly to us. So okay. as far as you know what the what the lowest amount is i don't know a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars i mean some of some of these grants have been fairly small and it, i mean that's okay right if if that's all that a group needs to you know i don't know fix their repeater or start a start a, a amateur radio training program or you know whatever that's that's fine you know, I, okay. I think the thing you want to ask the question, maybe ask the question a little different way. How much are you, are, is the club willing to fund by itself? Right? I mean, in, in every situation is different. If there's a club, you know, that's relatively affluent asking for $500, well, you know, maybe they can find that in their club treasury. But if, if they need $10,000, well, that's a different story. Because that's a little bit more than you might and it's expect. It's a significant it. amount of uh, money more, actually. Yeah. Well, okay. So five thousand yeah, for a club. Yeah. You know what? Whatever it is, you know, it, 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 what, whatever the amount is that you really can't come out of a club's coffers. So I, I just want to go back to Jack's question. Jack's question, I now understand what he was asking. He was talking about when you're talking about the software upgrade in your office, oh, are you yeah. are you going to the ARDC for a grant for that? I think that's a tongue in cheek question, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> what was the, let's see what the original what was the original question no we were talking about how you were talking about how you were apologizing that you're right. in an in a transition of software uh, in the oh, office maybe we, at I ARDC. See, I see, yeah maybe we he wants to know if you're going to the grant to the ARDC for the grant <laughs> well you know so so actually the so so our our focus is on open source right in fact that 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 that's actually another uh, requirement is that whatever product comes out of a grant, you know, be it a repeater system or or classes, it has to be open access. Everybody, if it's a repeater, everybody has to be able to use it. If it's a class, anybody needs to be able to take it. And so we're big on open source software. So this this uh, software we're using now to process the grants is called Haifa. That's, that's not necessarily. Uh, pertinent, but it's open source software. And so in a way, we actually are funding that group, Haifa, to produce this software for us. But then that will be available to, to other foundations that want to do grants. So so we are kind of giving ourselves a grant in this case. <laughs> what is the maximum size of a grant that you would give, that ARDC would give? Well, I Would think the say? biggest grant we've given so far is like like 1.5 million, 1.8 million. I forget the exact amount. It was to uh, restore the uh, the radome at MIT. And uh, there's another. In fact, if if I would have thought a more a little bit more about this, I would have mentioned this. We we just we recently gave a grant for nine hundred thousand dollars to the Internet Archive to archive amateur radio stuff. You know, and by, by that stuff, I mean, really stuff like I'll give you an example. So I've just been swapping email with this guy and, and they're they're a, In fact, they, they have a presentation in the project gallery. So so people can go and look at that afterwards right. or whenever. It, this is a really great project they, they, they intend. You know, the Internet Archive is really kind of an amazing thing. Uh, they intend to archive any amateur radio related material that people send them so i've been swapping emails with this fellow who's been just appointed the uh the manager of this project and i said well what about our old club uh newsletters he says sure tell me how much you got and then you know so we're ready for it and send it to us he says we'll scan it in and we'll put it online so all right I, he, I they've also that. talked to me about the podcast right so um oh, yeah. When we're gone in a hundred years, the Internet Archive could have the QSO Today podcast. It could right. have uh, right. Ham Radio right. Workbench. It could have Ham Nation. 
So KB6, um, KB6NU.com. That's I, right. I exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So no, if I, it's published out there. Yeah. This, it's a great know, idea. This, honestly, I think this is going to be an amazingly cool thing. And um, so I, I'm going to I'm going to try and work with them and help uh, get the word out more about it. You know, that's that's my thing is get, getting the word out about stuff. And uh, but it's going to it's going to be it's going to be an amazing thing, I think. Because uh, Walter, I'm sorry, I, no, Walter no, again asks uh, to clarify, is the ARRL the fiscal sponsor for clubs who are not 501c3 compliant? No, no. So what the ARRL is. It, we we gave that money to the ARRL to then bow to clubs. So they're a 501, the ARRL, and it's the ARRL Foundation, not the ARRL. That's, there are two separate groups, although they're very interrelated. Um, we gave that money to the ARRL Foundation, which is a 501c3, as a, as a, a t total grant. Okay, so they can dole it out however they want. And so uh, they're not they're not the fiscal sponsors in that they're responsible to us. I mean, we we are kind of keeping an <laughs> to tell you the truth. We are kind of keeping an eye on them to make sure that, that they're doing it the way we think they should do it. But but they're they're not a fiscal sponsor in in the legal respect. They're 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 they got the money and they're, now they're giving it out. Um, I'm putting up another one from. Um from Scott K7TTN. What about a curriculum as meeting the open source requirement, one that can be redistributed to schools interested in implementing the lessons and infrastructures? Yep, th this is what, th it's, there are several projects that are uh, doing this already. So one of the projects that um, is in, in progress is something called, uh, uh, let's see what, I'm trying to think of the name. Jasmine and Jules build a radio. It's not Jules; it's something else. But anyway, there's it, it's it, this is a, a book for kids that like fourth and fifth graders, and and it's gonna um, uh, show them how to build a radio and why they want to build a radio and that kind of thing. All of that material is going to be open source, so anybody else that wants to use that material can then um, uh, just use it. You know, go to the it's the the the, the organization that's doing this a, a organization called Sciences Elementary. So when this project is the, complete, people will be able to go to that uh, that website and, and get that get that curricula for that uh, curriculum for that uh, uh, course. Another one that that uh, is kind of an exciting project uh, we're doing with the National Radio Observatory. And they're going to use amateur radio to teach uh, kids about the electromagnetic spectrum and why it's in. And they're developing a, a curriculum to do this, to teach this work. And that's going to be all open source, all, all freely accessible. So, yeah, it, all this uh, all this stuff is, uh, I mean, that's that's like one of our main requirements is that everything be open access. Okay. Um now, Scott has a lot of questions. Scott, just to remind you, if we run out of time, um, we'll answer all of your questions. If we run out of time, um, you can join Dan in the uh, ARDC booth uh, in the Kumo Space lounges. And I, I'm sure he'll be there as long as you have questions. Uh, even after the session, Dan, would you be available for a few minutes oh, after yeah, yeah. the session? And, and, um, I, and I, tomorrow, I, or you I come back tomorrow. I talked to Scott yeah, there earlier. So yeah, these um, the Kumo Space lounges are open for the forty-eight full forty-eight hour period. So if there's nobody in there, then obviously there's no questions. But you're welcome to stay as long as as you want to have these conversations. Um, one right. of the questions that Scott has asked, which is an interesting question, is is that can ARDC work with organizations located outside of the United States? Oh yeah, sure. And, and you know we, we we that's excuse me. We're, we're trying to actually uh, expand the the our reach yeah you know, that's I'll put it that way you know right now most of the grants have been given to US organizations because that's who knows about us but we're we're trying to expand our reach and um, uh, but yeah it, it, you know it's we're happy to do that you know this Rizomatica, I think they're 
Um, I think they're located in Brazil. I, I don't think they're in the U.S., but but uh, they're they're even even if they are in the U.S., they are working with organizations outside of the U.S. So yeah, th- that's and, and you we, mentioned we earlier the you mentioned earlier the AX25 project, which is uh, in Germany, right, 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 right. You know, and M17 is really an international project too. Um, you know, we we know the guys here in in uh, the U.S., but the uh, I don't know what you want to call the the technical genius behind M17. He's he's in Poland. So yeah, you know we're 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 up for, you know that. Think about that, right? Ham radio is international, so our giving is international. I mean that's right in Part ninety seven point one, right? You know as the recognition of the amateur's ability to foster good international relations. That's what we want to be able to do too. Okay, Dave N eight S B E S. Any particular open source license? BSD, GPL, Creative Commons. Well, yeah, that's a good question. I don't. I don't think we've we've actually addressed that properly yet. But uh, we. I don't think we've zeroed in on that yet. Um. So so Scott is asking. Uh, or ARES projects and collaborations outside of the United States. So we, we you talked about giving grants to um, to projects that uh, are outside. What about something that's more specific like this? And I'm maybe well, we do you understand I, the question? Yeah, kind of, I guess. So, like for example, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Scott. What what I could see happening here, for example, say a hurricane hit uh, Bermuda, right? Would would we fund a project to help restore repeaters in Bermuda? And the answer is yes. Does that uh, Scott? Does that does that help? There's a little bit of delay. Okay. If if there's no more questions, then um, we'll end the stream. You can you're free to go to the ARDC booth uh, either right after this presentation or tomorrow, and Dan will be there to answer any questions that you have. And of course, uh, he'll be happy to give you at that time his email address, or maybe you want to give it now, Dan. Sure, D- Dan at ARDC.net. That couldn't be easier. Dan at ARDC.net, and. Um, we thank you, every. Let's see. I'm just looking to see if there's any more last questions. Uh, he's uh, Scott. Scott came back in. We, there's about a 30 second delay between um, between our talking and what you see. So um, Scott says he's living in in Oklahoma. Is that right? We have a large need for tor- tornado emergency services. I guess if it's ham radio related, how would how would you answer there? Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, like, like one of the one of the grants we made recently. In fact, I, I need somebody asked how we follow up on these things, or how do we make sure the monies are spent properly. One one of the things I have to do is uh, do a final interview with a group that we gave money to to restore the repeaters in the Virgin Islands uh, because the tornado came through there a couple years ago and basically destroyed the repeater infrastructure. So you know that that kind of thing. That's that's what we we do. I'd also I'd also think, and I mean I'm this is just my personal opinion that you that you know we we have a I'll, I'll explain just quickly what what the process is. So when somebody submits an application via this software that's sort of working, is uh, the <laughs> the grant the application goes to the grant advisory committee, and they review it and then they take a vote on it. Once they take a, and this is a little bit bureaucratic, but once they take a vote on it and pass it through, it goes to the board for a final approval. So it gets looked at by a number of different people, all with differing sort of viewpoints about how these things should be funded. So while I would say, yes, and we have funded emergency services in different in the past, we've also rejected some for different reasons and we you know we can talk about that in the in the lounge a little bit later if you'd like 
and it okay. all de- it uh, it all depends how they how the applic you know how complete the application is how 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 uh, well thought out it is and then you know what kind of equipment they're asking for that that, that all that plays into whether a, an application is approved or not I think that's all the questions, Dan. I want to thank you so much for bringing uh, the ARDC to the Q, uh, QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo. It's almost three in the morning here, so if I'm stumbling over <laughs> my words, it's um, from lack of sleep. But um, I want to thank you. I, I often say in uh, the QSO Today podcast that we live in the golden age of ham radio and that ham radio is this three-ring circus that now has a midway of a 1,000 tents. I, I think it's it's so amazing from the foresight of the original founders of the Ampere project to buy all of those um, IP addresses, uh, maybe not knowing that at some point in their life it would be such a um, a Valuable tremendous asset. gift to, to to the amateur radio community. So um, the fact that ARDC has this um, this capability now to fund these projects. Um, at a time when many people think ham radio is a dying hobby, um, I, I think, you know, it just adds to the fact that this we are in the golden age of ham radio. So I want to thank you and ARDC for coming to the expo and for sharing um, this bit of the golden age with us. Well, certainly my pleasure. My pleasure. I, I, we, we get a lot out of these things, and um, thank you for doing it. Okay, that's it. We'll, we'll see you later in the lounge. All right. Bye-bye. 7-3, everybody. 73.